Okay. I'll mix up a good strong soup of this. Just painting on 140 pound paper again. Right at it. This is a mix of cerulean and lemon yellow, painting around the head, around the, the fur. I can soften up some of the outside edges here if I want. Keeping it fairly wet because I'm I am going to drop in a little more some more darks back here, but I want to cover get the area covered that I want. I'm painting this in silhouette. In other words, I'm not going from edge to edge here. So okay. careful to outline the animal neck. A little bit of the back. Okay, now I'll drop in a little bit of ultramarine in a few spots just to change it up a little bit. Strengthening the color in a few spots. A little ultramarine, a little extra. Got a little sepia in there, that's okay. Shoulder, I want to darken it a little bit more under the neck. Okay. And I'm just going to soften up a little bit of this background here. Dropping in these colors very loose, not uh, not really suggesting anything. Going real saturated. Okay. going to be it for the large flat brush. I'm going to move to my round brush now. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start doing some with some yellow ochre. So let's see, we've got some yellow ochre here. I'm going to start filling in the area in the front of the face, keeping in mind that my sunlight is really strong all the way around the top of the head. So, I'm going to move the brush around in the front of the face, looking at the photo, looking at, looking at kind of which way the curls of the hair are going. I'm not, do, I'm not completely covering it. I'm, I'm using yellow ochre. Do you have, well, do you have a, it's a, you need a, um, a warm yellow, so if you have raw sienda, you, you can use a little. Here, just steal some light right there. Which one is it? Yeah. So I'm moving the brush around the face, and I want you to see this, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. On the because they're dancing on the face of the dog, but I don't think they're going to be if you turn them off. Here, let me go. Uh, 
No, I'm not. This is pure yellow ochre. kitchen off. No, is it okay now? Fine. Fine for me. Thank you. Good. How about back there? Okay. I don't know if we can turn the kitchen off. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, we can turn the kitchen off. Switch is behind the door. Okay, I'm going to continue. Thank you, Sandy. Depends on where you're sitting and what you see is. Yeah, yes, I can see. Yeah, from here. From here you can see. Yes, yes absolutely. Yes, and you can't. I'm not using the yellow too strong, only in some of the. Darker areas under the jaw. Are you into now? Uh, the same, the same color. Yes. I'm building up the yellow ochres a little stronger around the mouth. Looking at the photo uh, by the nose, where its cheeks would be, I suppose. A little more saturated, a little heavier under the chin. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm going to take a little bit of sepia and I'm going to darken this color up just a little bit and start building up some of my shadows. And that would be mouth. Say it again. What do you have? I'm building up the shadows using a little bit of sepia mixed into my yellow ochre. And I'm going to, as I paint, I'm going to make it a little bit darker as I go along. Still using my round brush, my main, my main uh, number eight and round brush. Are you doing sepia? Yeah, sepia mixed with the yellow ochre. Okay. Because that, because what we do is we eventually we, we're starting light and we're, we're building up to darker and darker values. So, you know, we only have a few defined things here on this, this pooch's face, basically the nose and eyes. Mouth isn't that well defined, so um, I'm actually going to go ahead and start painting in the eyes. This will help kind of give me a little bit of direction and keep my focus. And I'll eventually make the eyes a little darker. That's what's important right now is that. No, just sepia. Uh, yeah, and we'll eventually, you know, to make them even more dark, we can add a little ultramarine in there. I'm just dropping it in. And I'm going to treat the nose the same way. Sort of in a character 
Broadway. Don't know. Don't remember. Right. The guy who did the uh, the poker playing dog. No, <laughs> the blue dog. I know what you're saying. You know who I mean? Yeah. Picasso did a blue man, but I can't remember. You know. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't the it was an American artist with him. It was right. And it went to look like that. So I'm continuing to build up the darks, especially around the mouth area. Around the eyes. I'm going to start adding a little bit more blue to kind of gray this out a little bit. Because around the eyes and around some of the, the nose a little bit, there's more of a, a darker grayish color. It's got a little bit of blue influence, a little bit of the light that's hitting it. You know, as if this were a dog were sitting under a fluorescent uh, lamp a little bit. So I'm going to try to, trying to be mindful of the, of the hair on this animal and the fact that, you know, if I was using a flat brush and, and blocking it in, that would kind of take away from that. So that's why we have the round brush now. So it kind of, so we could make some of these hair strands. Big, big, thick, coarse hair that this little guy has. And this grayish blue that we have also suggests, you know, some some, some shadow uh, where the eyes are inset a little bit. You know, this isn't a pug, but it does have a small face. So have to a little tricky here. So I'm going back and forth in, in some different spots here, just looking at where some of my darks are. Looking at, looking at how the, the, the fur is going, in some, some areas you kind of see there's a little bit of direction. So you kind of get, yeah, it's, you know, painting, painting this kind of uh, texture, you got to move the brush around in different directions. Like when we do trees in nature, when you paint a tree and we paint the, the branches, you want to use, you know, ideally you use different size brushes and you move the brush around in different directions because that gives it a more convincing natural look. Here, got to do a little bit of that too. So, I'll drop in some more darks under the chin. Help move the head forward a little more. dark spots in the mouth which help so the form so the head starts to take a little bit of recognizable form here now as I mentioned um, alizarin and crimson are red I do want to add a little bit of red tone to this. Not strong. So 
under the chin. I gotta be careful here because there's some, some lights even that appear under the chin. I don't want to cover those up. Little guy almost has like a mustache. Try to try to indicate some of that. Tough, but hey. Okay. Um. How you guys doing? I hear laughing. That's good. It's not good. It's not embarrassing. It's not a good laugh. It's embarrassing. Well, I'm recording this, oh, wait, so I I'm recording this, so uh -oh. go back if I get this guy it. on YouTube, you guys. Uh... You can go back and redo it. That's right. Yellow, we have to keep light. What, what white is basically is a reflection of all colors around it. So that's that's where that comes from. And what's black? Black is the absence of color. Absence. It's a vacuum. Uh, that's why we don't see it in nature because there is no true absence of color. Only in space is there absence of color. Not here to defend himself. No, he's good. I foreshortened his nose he's somehow. So cute. I didn't get any depth there. Somehow my dog had a good nose. It just looks like a mess. Oh, that looks good. I like it. It just looks like a mess. Oh, it looks good from over here. You saved a lot of white. I had trouble keeping some white. Sorry. Yes. Trouble keeping white, yeah, that's what. So, dark under the chin. Appreciate you keeping your screams to a minimum. They are. They really are. I'm surprised. Look at how fast you're painting. Just tiny. It's fast though. Yes. So, I'm looking out where my darkest darks are under the head, so I can push that forward a little bit more. So, I don't try to lose. 
profile of this animal too much. Hope it's working out. How's it look up there? course, got to be careful with the eyes because there's the large pupils, but then there's the rest of the eyes, which keep a little white highlight in the eye, too. Yeah. As you work in it, it's, you know, a lot of characteristics of when painting a human face. You know, you got the deep set eyes, you got the nose, which you don't want to flatten out, which we tend to do. Okay. A couple more areas here. Some darks with sepia. eyes a little bit more. Get darker, it's more dark because it's so flat. Okay. In the face, so some darker darks under the chin to push the chin forward. Okay. A little bit more. You went from light to dark, we need to get some.